Hi guys, welcome to Moving On TV and The Holistic Show. You're just about to watch a really exciting interview with Kathleen Milner about her healing therapies and the books that she's written. So sit down, have a nice cup of tea and welcome to The Holistic Show. So hi Kathleen and uh, welcome to Moving On TV. It's really good to have you here. Thank you again. Um, today we're going to talk about the healing that, that, that you do um, because you're a healer. And uh, I just want to explain to my viewers um, how you became a healer because uh, something happened and you had some experiences and you became a healer. So would you like to tell us a little bit about it? Well, I, I was actually born with healing and psychic abilities, but I was born long enough ago that my parents did not approve of a child who could talk to angels. And so gradually over the years, you know, I, I just shut down. These abilities shut down. And, but occasionally something would happen, only it would be like full blown. And after I got married, there was one day that I looked in the mirror and I thought, I am exactly who and what my parents and my husband at the time wanted me to be. And they still don't like me. Hmm. And it wasn't long after that that I got a divorce. And that's when I prayed to God that I wanted the abilities that I had as a child to come back. And so it started with prayer. And slowly they did come back. And then I was guided to take different classes. And one of the classes that I was guided to take was Reiki. I went to a demonstration by Helen Borth, and I could see that, that healing was actually taking place. And so I took the class, and, but the thing of it was that I could do more healings before I took the class than after I took the class. And I asked why. And that's something that is a good thing when you're involved with spirits and angels is to keep asking questions. Why are you in divine truth? You know, all the questions we get to ask those and God wants us to ask those questions. And it took a while before God answered me. Uh, during the Reiki two initiation, they only initiated one hand and I got to choose which hand and it just did not feel right. I mean, why not both hands? It didn't make any sense. And uh, when the initiation was over, I looked up and I said, where's the rest of the initiation? And th these initiations, these Reiki initiations, were brought, this is what Takata's story was, that she went to, to Japan, she, she received these initiations from a Buddhist monk who was a descendant of Dr. Sui. And I was guided to take other classes too. I took shaman classes, and I found out that this is the way that I worked with angels when I was younger. I, I didn't draw symbols. I didn't place my hands on any way. I closed my eyes and I watched the angels worked. Okay. So I learned about that. And I, I don't know how this happened, but I was invited to speak and do a workshop at the Whole Life Expo in New York. This is in the early 1900s. 1900s, 1990s, I'm not that old. <laughs> okay. That makes you <laughs> a very old lady. <laughs> so um, hmm. I, I went to the, I, the workshop was, well, the, the lecture was packed. And then the workshop was packed. And then I found out, which I should have gotten money from, you know, a, a percentage of the money from the, the workshop. But a friend of mine told me that they declare bankruptcy. Uh, and after each Whole Life Expo. So then they called me and they asked me if I would like to speak and do, uh, and do a workshop in Los Angeles. But I was one step ahead of them because I knew, and they wanted, me to get, wanted to give me a booth in exchange for, for doing all this. But I'm one step ahead of them because I know that it's either the booth or nothing because they're going to declare bag bankruptcy. So I took the booth and it was a big table and I hadn't written any books so I, I recorded a uh, meditation that I, I used to give when I would do classes. Matter there was a meditation on each side. So on this big table, all I had were these, you know, a couple of stacks of, of audio tapes. 
And then somebody came along, and I was doing healing demonstrations, and I do them, and I still do them for on a donations are accepted basis. And one man came up, and he wanted a healing, and then he went off and talked to his wife. She came. I did a healing on her, and they asked me to come back to L.A. and do a uh, class at their house. So, you know, then they put up a sign-up sheet. So now I've got the audio tapes and a sign-up sheet. And a, a lot of people were impressed. A lot of people signed up. So I was able to give the sign-up sheet to the, the man who was setting up the classes. And then I went to uh, Marcy Miller, my friend Marcy Miller, uh, was renting a, a room in this um, in this ashram, which was really uh, a Los Angeles home, a one-story Los Angeles home. And we are. And before I I, I went to the to her home, uh, Ricky Masters would come up to me and they they would say, "We know you can heal, but did you know that none of us can heal in the manner that Takata did?" And there are written, documented testimonials of her doing actual healings and even one of her raising the dead. Okay, sorry to stop you there. Can you explain sure. a little bit about Takata? Well, Takata, like I said, she was a Japanese American and after World War II, her claim was that she went to Japan and brought back this healing method from, from Japan called Reiki. Uh, it came from a man uh, named Dr. Asui who had been a Buddhist monk. Uh, he went to the University of Chicago and got a doctorate of theology. And, but there are several problems with her story, is that the University of Chicago has no record of anyone named Mikhail Asui, Dr. Asui, anyone like that, attend, even attending a class, let alone graduating. And the monastery where he was supposed to have been a monk in Japan has no record of him even visiting. Right, that's interesting. So what I learned just a couple of years ago, because I had this consciousness-raising experience with Buddha when I was in this monastery with, um, with Marcy. What, what, and Buddha will come to me every now and then, and he'll, he'll tell me something new or, or you know, bring the healing energies of Teramai up. And what he told me a couple of years ago was that Takata did not get this in Japan that she had a consciousness-raising experience with Buddha in Hawaii. Right. So you're and, basically, you channel Buddha. You channel the spirit of Buddha. I channeled the, yeah. that fo photo that I sent you with the light coming down into my oh, yeah. head and into my heart. I channel healing energies from God. And right. every now and then, uh, my consciousness will shift, and it will shift and I'll connect with Buddha. And one uh, ascended master, you know, told me that, um, I don't think they call them ascended masters when they're in body, but someone who is very high up told me that, that it is possible for an ascended being to connect with a person. And when they do that, they stay with that person for the rest of, their, of that person's life, unless something really dramatic happens, you know, that they, you know, shift from light to dark, you know, that can, that can break the chain. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so that's how I connect with Buddha. Okay, okay. So um, when you talk about your healing, the healing experience of the light that came down, did that make your, the healing more powerful that you were able to give people? Did you feel that that's when it, there was a, a shift in, in your healing? Well, the healing energy has always been there, but it was, it really subsided, you know, thanks to my parents, you get put down enough, you're scolded enough, you know, things go away. So it's all, it was always there. But after I started this journey, it started to increase. When I feel the healing energy, like when I've got my hands on somebody, I can feel my hands, I can feel the energy running through me and into my hands. And then when healing miracles happen or spontaneous healings happen, like I was in New Jersey and doing healing demonstrations. And there was a young girl named Audrey uh, who wanted to, whose grandmother wanted me to do a healing on her. And Audrey, uh, Audrey had all kinds of heart surgeries. And when I put my hand on her heart, I have never felt this before in my life. Instead of a nice steady heartbeat, it was, it was, I could actually feel the stress in the heart and, and the raggedness of the beat. 
and as I'm doing that, I can, I can feel the goddess aspect. Now, there is one God, but God has both a feminine and a masculine aspect. If, it, he, if God didn't have a feminine aspect, you and I wouldn't be here. Sure. So we're created in God's image. Of the minds, yes. Exactly. So it's the feminine aspect of God that heals. And when the, the miracles happen, my heart chakra just opens up. It just it feels like it's as big as the room. Okay. And tears come to my eyes, and Audrey turned, and she looked at me. She was crying. Um, her mother and the, the audience were crying. So there is this tremendous healing that comes forth, and her heart became normal. Wow, that's very exciting. Okay, so, so that's one of the examples. I mean, we've got loads of people, myself included, that are walking around with conditions that doctors can't figure out anymore. There's so many conditions going around, particularly people um, that are very sensitive. I, I, I've got lots and lots of symptoms now. So um, how, how would you heal people like that? Have you had people that come to you where there's absolutely nothing that they can't determine? It's not like a serious disease like cancer, or, um, but... The, the symptoms are really strong. Do you get people like that coming to you that have given up on doctors, basically, and just don't want to do anymore? Well, mostly I get people who the, whom the doctors have given up on. Right. Okay. So people with, oh, like, terminal cancers, things like that, would you say, as well? Right. And there is one um, testimonial on KathleenAnnMilner.com where, where Jennifer... Uh, Gargan has talked talked about coming to me one time. She had cancer, and, when, and during this during the healing, she felt the cancer had gone, and she went back to her doctor. They they looked at the tests, and it was the cancer was gone. That's incredible. So what I do, like with someone like you, I could tune in, and I I I want I'm not gonna I don't do um, medical diagnosis. Matter of fact, most of the time what the angels show me, they show me metaphors of things that are happening. So if I tune into you, I just, I, I close my eyes. And I, I ask the angels to bring the light in. So I'm going to call upon the angels. I call upon God, the Father Almighty, the divine God, the divine goddess, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit I am. And through you, I call upon your great archangels, Serial, 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 Serakael, 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 Gabriel, 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 Michael, 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 Raphael, 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 Zadkiel, 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 Amiwell, 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 Daniel, 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 Israel, Israel, Israel. Jophiel, 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 Camuel, 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 Reguel, 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 Remael, 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 Ariel, 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 Oriel, 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 Pathael, 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 Barakael, 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 Azrael, Azrael, Azrael. Raziel, 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 Gadiel, 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 Gamaliel, Gamaliel, Gamaliel. Lauren, take a deep breath and exhale. And your listeners, when they watch this, they, they will most likely get a healing as well. What I'm seeing is the light coming in and just darkness coming up. And I'm going to keep calling the angels in. Gamaliel, 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 Ezekiel, 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 Ishmael, 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 Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Okay, Lauren, can you feel that light coming into your crown? Mm hmm. Yes. And it's coming through your body, it's in your head, it's coming down to your neck and chest. Take a deep breath. And exhale. So it's kind of like in architecture, in building, they have to uh, 
prepare the, the ground. You know, the, the ground has to be level before they can put a building on it. Mm -hmm. So with healing, all, you know, the darkness has to come off. First the clearing and then the healing can come in. And since I'm not there to do this, please place your right hand on your left shoulder. And I want you to work down your arm and just kind of twist down your arm and, and pull down all the way down to the fingertips and then pull off your fingertips and throw this stuff down. Do it again, starting at the shoulder and working all the way down the arm. Good girl, good girl, keep going. And pull out your fingertips and throw it down. Click your fingers. Throw this stuff down like you're throwing it down to the central fire. And third time is the charm. Start again. And work down your arm. And your viewers can do this as well. All the way down to the fingertips. Take a deep breath. Exhale and throw it down. <sighs> Sending it down to the fire. Good job. Good job. Okay, now... Pay Tune into both of your arms. Is there a difference between your left and your right arm? There's always a difference between my left and right, yeah. Okay, what's happening? What's different between your left arm right now? Oh, you mean at the moment? Yes. My left is tingling. Feels a lot more tingly and like there's a, a light around it. Okay, now... Take your left hand and put it on your right shoulder and do the same thing. Work down your right arm all the way down to the fingertips. Pull the stuff out and send it down to the earth's central fire. Okay, again, all the way down. People at home do this as well. All the way down to the fingertips, pull it off and send it down. Again, everyone can be doing this with me. Exactly, exactly. You know, I look like I've changed my color because I've gone so dark. <laughs> There's <not laughs> a light in here. <laughs> and the light's behind you. Okay, yeah. how, does your, how does your right arm feel now? Yeah, tingly. Tingly as well. Okay, mm -hmm. let's, let me ask the angels to bring more light. Or heavenly gold, diamond white light, diamond silverly light, into your crown and through your body. And let's see, at your heart chakra, let's get this off of your heart chakra. Angels, cut these cords. Take a deep breath, Lauren. And exhale. You feel that coming off? Did you feel that pull coming off? Or do you mm -hmm. feel clear now? Okay, now the back heart chakra, angels lose Reese the sun. I feel a lot lighter. Do you feel sometimes like you've got a strap around you? Mm. Okay, let's get this. Let's unbuckle my back. I'm, I have a massive blockage in my throat, and I'm a singer. But it's not good. Absolutely. No, that's not good. Let me get this thing off of your heart first. Because you also sing with your heart. Yeah. And okay, take a deep breath. Well, I've had a lot of grief. Okay, take a deep breath. Where a lot is stuck at the moment. And exhale. People at home do this as well. Do you have problems with your left shoulder? Terrible. Left shoulder, neck. Um, yeah, very bad. Yeah. Okay, but my, my, mostly, mostly, mostly your left shoulder as opposed to yes. your right. Okay, yeah. let's, all right, let's go yeah. in. All right, angels, bring in quick white angelic reese lightning. Cleanse the angelic showers, the energies of the blue stars. Lift this up. Also, the side of your left neck, is that true? Yes. Okay, let's get this thing off of her. The whole of the left, yeah, it's very bad. I lie down at night, nose really bad. Yeah, I have something called mirror touch synesthesia, and they've just named it. It's always been around, but that means that I can feel when I'm working on somebody, I can feel in my body what's going on with you. 
Mm -hmm. I don't feel everything. Okay, take a deep breath and exhale. Everybody at home, do this as well. If you have another place in your body that's hurting, focus on that and breathe the light into it and exhale this. And let's get this thing off your throat. And around the throat, it's often fear. Yeah. So let your fears come up, all your fears. Let them come up and exhale them. Give them away to the end. So anyway, that was really powerful. And I do feel, you know, a lot more flexibility in, in my body, I must admit. What okay, well, let's, let's get rid of some of these blockages that you were telling me about. Yeah. Right. You have okay. people... I want to make this generic because a lot of people are going through so much now. Right. People have money blocks. Uh, people feel there's a lot of chaos going on in our world. It's like people are talking about the ascension and loads of symptoms and people are not being treated very respectfully. People are not getting back to them. And so there's a lot of stress going on. So how would you help people like that? I mean, is there any way they can help themselves or would they need to come to you to do the healing? Can they do it on themselves, or how would that work? Well, there is something called the Wednesday night 8 p.m. clearing, and it's been going on for 10 years. It started in August of 2008. Every Wednesday, people all over the world, wherever it is 8 o'clock where you are, they tune in and they say, please, angels, God's angels, please connect me to the chair of my healers who are doing the clearings. And then they can work for as long as they want. They can, they can meditate, they can pray, they can do whatever spiritual aspect they want for whatever they want. And this, since this has been going on for 10 years, there's actually a wave that's going around this planet. And so we can call upon um, angels of God, please connect us to the Wednesday night clearing wave and to the chair of my healers who are doing the clearings, healings, and prayers for abundance and love. So what I want you to do, and I want your viewers to do, is to breathe in the energies of abundance. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask white flames to blaze through the blockages and burn them to the ground. Keep breathing in prosperity, and prosperity is more than and money. It is money, it's gold, but it's also so much more. It's respect, it's love, it's joy, it's fulfillment, it's success. And we're going to call, also call upon the September new moon, which brings success and opportunities. So we're going to call upon these two energies, the energies of the, of the September new moon, success and opportunities, and the Wednesday night clearing wave. And just feel the energies of the Wednesday night clearing wave coming through you, clearing away the blockages. Blockages in your body, blockages in your life, And like you said, lots of people are experiencing blocks right now, an inability to move forwards. Yeah, the, there's a lot of that going on. The I energy of the people I'm, saying that. Mm. The energies of the new age, what's it like to go into, the gold, into this golden age or new age? It's like an elevation of consciousness and an elevation of our DNA. Because Edgar Cayce saw us going into the golden age with whole, healthy, youthful bodies. And that's how it's going to be done. Our DNA is going to be elevated. So just every, you, Lauren, and, and your viewers, close your eyes and just feel inside your body. Feel your DNA elevating. Feel all the blockages being taken away. Feel the energies of the goddess, the healing energies of the goddess coming into you and through you. Feel doors of opportunity opening for you. Feel yourself, see yourself being in the right place at the right time. Take a deep breath and exhale. Just feel these blocks. Feel your sorrow, anger, and fears leaving. Just let them go. Give them to the angels. Feel them dropping away from you. And the light's coming into your crown and going down through you. I don't know if your viewers can see this, but I can see your aura to, on this side of your head, 
it's it's all it's it's yellow and gold and white so i don't know if this is coming to the camera or if i'm just seeing this that would be interesting you might ask your viewer yeah. what they they're seeing my, my aura <laughs> okay um Thank you. This is absolutely brilliant and very effective, you know, for people who are watching because it's interesting that we, we actually have gone to that level now to talk about the ascension and what's happening because I, I feel that a lot of um, healers and a lot of light workers like myself, we're struggling uh, because we feel that it's taking too long, you know, and we keep seeing that things are going to change and you keep hearing about the connection to alien forces and the ascension and, you know, this reset where life is going to change, where it's going to be better, it's going to be more equal, where money's going to be, you know, where everyone will have what they need. And yet it just doesn't seem to happen. It's like people are just keep hearing about this stuff. And I know a lot of light workers like myself say, yeah, yeah, we've heard it for three years now, four years but we're getting to a point where things are really, really getting bad. You know, the, the, the way the world, the system and the way the world is being run now is, is getting to such a level where we have to see some changes for people. You know, I, like we are humanitarians and particularly what we can see what's happening with children. Um, there's such awful stuff going on in our world that when you are a light worker, and I know there'll be a people will be watching this will be light workers and humanitarians and healers. Some of them are doing really well and staying on that vibration. And some of them like myself keep being dragged down back in, into the third dimension, so to speak, uh, where we, we haven't got the patience anymore. It's like, come on, show it to me already. You know, I, I want to see the love. I want to feel it. I, you know, so how do you feel about that? Do you, with your connection, to the angels and to whatever you're you're in touch with, is it coming soon? <laughs> it, it is coming <laughs> soon. Everyone's asking when. <laughs> well, it, it's coming to the point. I used to live in Arizona, and I was on the Hopi reservation, and I saw Prophecy Rock, and it, and on it there is a stick figure of a man walking on on the path on on the timeline, and then the timeline divides and goes in two different directions. One where there are dying people and dying plants, and the other where there's happy people and happy plants, and the steps keep going up. And it used to, people used to think that the world was gonna go in one way or the other. No, this reality is gonna split in half. This is gonna be very unusual. And, you've, and that's what, the full moons and new moons for over a year, it's like the heavens have been saying, make a choice. It used to be that voodoo practitioners could do both healings and death spells. They can't anymore. They have to make a choice. Which right. side are you yes. on? These politicians. The politicians serve uh, special interests and supposedly the people. No, you've got to make a choice. You can't mm -hmm. serve both. Who are you going to serve? Are you going to serve the yeah, people? Sorry. Who can, they're going to be given a choice to go with the light, or if not, then they can't progress. I've heard that. Well, we're making the choice now by, every, by our thoughts, our words, our deeds, our actions. We're actually casting our vote now which way we're going to go. Mm. To try to wait. I know that I've heard about people who want to wait till the last minute who are really living in darkness. And I say, well, at the last minute, I'll get out of this and I'll ask to go to the light. No, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It's, mm. you know, it just doesn't. So how long, how long is it going to, basically, do you know approximately? Because you've got messages coming from, I don't know if you know about David Wilcock and Conscious Cosmos and stuff like that, where they're talking about that um, it's coming, that they're going to do this mass arrest of a whole lot of people. And then there's going to be a reset probably for a few days and then everything's going to change and they need time to do that. Like um, they have to do it when these people don't know that they're going to do it, like um, a shock kind of um, thing. So, and then everything's the, you know, everything's going to change and people need to have water and food and stuff like that for the ascension. So there's so many theories going around that there's so much confusion. I don't think anybody knows 
And then you've got um, a whole of lots of society, like I'd say probably 98% of society that are just stuck getting ready for Christmas. And they don't even care. They don't want anything to change. So how is this going to happen? Well, even several decades ago, I told people, I said, you know, by 2020, if either God's hand hasn't come in or we make an active effort to get break away from fossil fuels and, and into renewable energies, that by 2020, there won't be an earth. Mm. And you can see it with these, not only is Florence ravaging the Carolinas right now, but there's a typhoon uh, mm. in the South Sea that is ravaging, that is about to you know, hit China. And mm. these things are getting out of hand. And every year, the, the, the storms get bigger and bigger and bigger because of global warming. The mm -hmm. ocean get warmer which feeds the hurricanes and the typhoons the air is warming it holds more water and so I'm really how are we going to save humanity how are we going to save our planet we we have to start with ourselves and even to do simple things like recycling you know just really simple things praying open our hearts and i'm, I'm writing my sixth book right now it's called awakening the spirit within the ethereal okay. cord between the heart chakra and solar plexus. And it's really tuning into this energy channel and connecting to the spirit of God that is within us. Because within this cord, this is where we get our gut feelings. In the Bible, it says God speaks to us without words. This is how God speaks to us, through gut feelings and inner knowing. Inner knowing does not happen in the head. It happens in, inside of us. And we have to start listening to that, to that, to that energy, that voice within us, our own connection to the divine. And when you can do that, you can kind of get above things and just get the feeling, you know, you work and you work and you get the feeling that everything's going to be okay. Then you go, then you remember that feeling. Like one time I was divorced and I had, you know, a preteen kids and I ended up getting this horse. And I was painting because I used to be represented by Wright Gallery in Chicago during the 1980s. And I'm painting this horse. And I, and I just said, asked God, I said, do you really mean that for me to keep this horse? And I, I got the message, the horse is yours to keep. So every time things got bad, I would just remember that painting. And I, 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 I just put myself in that situation where I knew that things were going to be okay. So mm -hmm. that's what you want to do. You know, work with the Wednesday night clearing. You know, get to a point where you know, you know inside yourself that things are going to be okay. And then when, when the world tries to crush you down, go back to that moment when you knew that everything was going to be okay. Okay. So let's go back to the Wednesday healing. How can people join the Wednesday healing? Is there a website that you can pass on to them? Um, yes, KathleenAnnMilner.com. Uh, Kathleen, go to the, sorry, can you say that again? KathleenAnnMilner.com. Kathleen N. Ann. No, not Ann. Ann. Like Ann Boleyn, but without the E. Okay. Uh, KathleenAnnMilner.com. Okay. And then go to the blog page. And then I, all the posts are listed alphabetically. And I think that one is listed Worldwide Wednesday Night Clearing. And click okay. on that. We'll put a link on so people can go straight on it. And so they can join that. And every Wednesday evening, of course, we have the time differences. No, 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 no. It's 8 o'clock, 8 p.m., wherever you are. Oh, okay. That's, okay. Why, that's why this wave was created, because at 8 p.m. is in, in, in the 24 time zones. And then if people cannot participate at the time when it's 8 p.m. in their time zone, they can always stop at, start at the top of any hour and say, okay, angels of God, please connect me to wherever the hour is 8 p.m. and the Terra My Healers are doing, who are doing the clearings and participate right. that way. So this huge so wave. We can have 10 years every Wednesday, huge wave of energy going around this planet. That sounds fantastic. So let me, because that I will pass this on. This is very exciting. So basically, you can go on to the link, uh, which I'll post. And, and doesn't matter what country you're in, doesn't matter where you are, 
at 8 p.m. every every Wednesday. You can go on there and connect to this massive source of healing that's coming from Kathleen. And where else is it coming from? It's coming from all the people who are participating. Right. So you, it's like a massive connection to all these healers all over the world. And basically, can you set an intention, say, for your, say, this evening, I'd like to be able to set an intention to heal my abundance? Or is, does, do you get a choice to choose what you want to heal? Or is it just whatever, it's collective healing, where everybody's doing the same type of healing around the same issues? Well, that's one reason I think it's become so popular, is because there is no set agenda. You can right. pray. You can play Tibetan bowls, you can drum, you can meditate, you can do whatever you want to for yourself, for others, for the earth, for whoever you want. I do suggest that, you know, some people really, really need to work on themselves and that's fine. But if you have the energy to, to do something for Mother Earth, you know, please do something. But, you know, it's, yeah. it's really up to each individual. And I think that's why it became so popular. And I think as well, there, I have noticed over my existence <laughs> that there is an intelligence that sometimes when we talk about timing and when say someone is waiting for something to come like a job, right. the universe will take care of what's more important. Even if I relate it back to myself, um, as I say, I, I got a job. And again, I'll just to tell my, view, my viewers, because people have similar conditions, similar things are happening. I got offered a job nearly three, nearly four weeks ago. But because of the way things are in, the, in England, you have to wait nearly two months now to be police checked. Now, the more I think about it, my job was supposed to start on a Thursday, and it's only two days a week. I was getting very upset about it. But then I found out about oxygen therapy, for my exhaustion, uh, some people are recommending oxygen therapy where you breathe in fresh, clean, pure oxygen into the body. And when I heard about the oxygen therapy, my intuition said to me, well, if you're going to have oxygen therapy, because I, um, I had my assessment, they said, yes. If you're going to have oxygen therapy on Wednesday, you may need to rest on Thursday. Do you see what I mean? So maybe your body... Or your higher self is saying, I need two months to get well. And then everything will, will fall into place, so to speak. That's because if you could tap into your spiritual intuition, it will give you an answer. So I was able to get past my anger at not working to understand that maybe I'm meant to get well first before I could actually go out there. Because sometimes you're going to get healing crisis. If you can imagine the body being filled with healthy oxygen after we've got chemtrails and we've got toxins and water and food, everything is, is full, we're full of toxins, the body, whatever we're eating. If you start pouring pure ox oxygen into your body, your body is going to say, oh my God, I don't recognize this. And so it might go into a little bit of a healing crisis. It's quite normal, I'd say. You know, so anyway, that's how I came to terms with the fact that this job is not happening yet. Because I thought, well, maybe you'll need to rest the next day. You'll need to drink more water. You won't be in a space to get in your car and drive and do a job, basically. So I think that's what I'm trying to say to a lot of people out there is if you can do what Kathleen is saying to you, if you can do the healing, do your own healing and go inside, you will get your answers. And the universe, there is a timing thing here with, with healing. Like people are saying, I'm not getting the abundance or I'm not getting this. Maybe there's something you need to sort out first that is stopping you. Do you see what I mean? Is that, so we're on the same wavelength with that. Right. I would have thought. Well, let, let me just say one thing. Um, that they can tune into, they can go to my website and read about the Wednesday night clearing. They don't have to be connected to my website to participate in it. So okay. I would definitely recommend that they go and they read about it first so that they know what they're getting into. Okay. Same. And then another way to deal with that problem, a problem, and also it's in the same vein, like for instance, I, my marriage was so bad and I just prayed to God that it would get better and it got worse. 
So the next time I prayed to God, I said, I can only deduce that you want me out of this marriage. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to prepare a way because my husband's not going to like it if I ask him for a divorce. And I couldn't believe it. He, he bumped into this, this woman who, when they were in high school, this, she was a girl who was madly in love with him. Huh. And so he was started an affair, and he oh, asked me oh. for a divorce. Well, there you go. So then I asked God, I said, okay, God, now you're going to have to take care of me and my children. Because I hadn't graduated from, from college. I'd gotten married before I graduated. So then I had to go back to college, and, and you know, everything, every, I, everything was always taken care of. I mean, I could work, but, I mean, it was always taken care of. So that's another way to do it. Say, okay, God, show me. Show me where you want me. Or I surrender. I surrender my whole life to you. Get me where you want me to be. And then listen. Listen to in here. And the more you listen and the more you act upon it, the smoother things go. And oftentimes these gut feelings are absolutely ridiculous. Our left brain goes, what the heck? You want us to do that? Are you serious? But when you take those steps and you actually work, uh, work out what you're, with this gut, what your inner knowing is telling you, everything magically works out. Sounds amazing. Mm. Yeah, I've heard people talk about that. As I say, there's a lot of people. When you talk about God, um, how would you describe your belief? What, what is God to you? God to me is, is so big, so massive, so multidimensional, we cannot possibly comprehend. So that's why, you know, we, we, like I said before, we think about God, it, God is both feminine and masculine. So we think about God and goddess. They're all part of this one, one being, God the creator, one being. The, the Jewish religion has different names for different aspects of the same God. I also, I believe in Jesus. I do not believe he was the only son of God. And I've had the Dead Sea Scrolls that were written at the same time as the Gospels. Mm. He never claimed to be the only son of God. Yeah. I believe that he is the avatar of the Piscean Age. And I do believe in the second coming. I believe that he is coming, and he is coming very, very soon. Mm. What does that mean? Uh, this is the is this what we're talking about, this ascension, where, people, where souls are going to ascend. No, I don't believe that. I, well, I believe it's the, it's, the, it's the ascension of our consciousness, the ascension of our DNA, where first one path is going to go one way, and the other path is going to go the other way. Yeah, Okay. So, mm. uh, but I believe that, that, that Jesus will physically walk this planet. Now, it, when I was a young Catholic student growing up, you know, they had in one of our readers, they showed uh, Jesus coming back as a Catholic priest in, in the black uh, tunic robes, the cassock, oh, I think. No, no, it was I thought, in the I thought of all the things that he could come back <laughs> as, this is not what he's going to come back at. So I don't know the date. I do not know what he's going to look like or if it's a woman. I have no idea. Okay. And even the Bible says no one's going to know the exact day and time, but I do know it's close. I know it's going to happen, you know, on or shortly after 2020. Okay. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot happening. And, uh, you know, people are questioning a lot of things and there's lots, you know, everything's shifting all over the place. We can feel that. I, I'm, I'm not going to go into my belief system because it's about what we're talking about here is about yourself and your healing. And do you want to, um, just going to have a quick break because I need to do an advert. Um, okay. Quick advert. Yes, shouted from the rooftops that there is a service on our beautiful NHS that I'm so proud of and we're all very proud to have. It's free guys and you know what when I ask someone do you know what a therapeutic community is they'll go blank nobody yeah, knows it even exists yeah. so I'm here to tell you that if you know anyone one of your colleagues or your friends or your family or yourself and they've given you that label borderline personality disorder be as lucky as I was and ask your doctor. Someone told, they told me, because I wouldn't take medication. 
ask them, can I please try what Lauren tried? As a my amazing chapter with interviews from Casey that is going in the book www.simplyamazingbook.com invite me to talk to sing uh, about this incredible recovery and the therapeutic community that is free on the NHS <laughs> You're always on my mind Circling, circling round my brain It happens all the time I close my eyes and the vision will appear I Wish that you were next to me But you're no longer here Wish we were together Not all alone Wish we were together Not all alone So welcome to Moving On TV, and um, today I've got Kathleen Milner and on the book show. Um, Kathleen has released six books, is that right? Uh, five books, and I'm working on actually okay. six and seven at the same time. Wow, you're working on the sixth and the seventh at the same time. Right. Okay, okay. I, I tried to write one book. I, I wrote one book with my father uh, before he died. Uh, we wrote it together. And, uh, but I, I'm, I've always meant to write another one about my life and my spirit and what's happening to me, but to actually write two books at the same time or, you know, anyway, can you tell us a little bit about the books you've written, what they're called and what they're about? Well, I, my first book was Reiki and Other Rays of Touch Healing. And it was basically about, you know, things that we've been talking about, about how I got to where I, where I am, you know, uh, different, different things, different methods of healing. Uh, and there's more than, than Reiki because what, when Takata, she changed the initiations before she came to the mainland of the United States. And what she did is there's a symbol called Seihei Ki that most people are familiar with. She cut Seihei. that in half. She That's cut cool. it in half. Mm -hmm. And when she cut it in half, more than half of the energy um, was gone. It was almost like the, those initiations started bleeding out their healing energy. And I, I can prove it because in the beginning she was able to do all these incredible healings and towards the end of her life she wasn't doing any healings at all. Whereas for me, the healing energy just keeps getting stronger and stronger all the time. Okay, so what, what's this book called that you're talking about? Well, that's Reiki and other rays of touch healing, but that's before I knew about the double say hey key. So I'm going to write, I'm writing another one now, and it's calling, it's called Awakening the Spirit Within, um, the ethereal cord between our heart chakra and our solar plexus. And I'll put in things about the double say hey key and things that I've learned since I've written that. I wrote another book called uh, Terra My Journey Home, where I talk more about the elemental healing rays of earth, air, fire, and water. Uh, in uh, Awakening the Spirit Within, I'll talk more about the fifth element, ether. Um, the other, other book I'm wor uh, working on right now is called After the Winding Sheet. And the winding sheet is the, the shroud that the body is wrapped up in. So it's like, what happens after death? What, what, what goes on? And, um, you know, it's a story. It's, it's a novel. It follows, um, it follows four girls, their family history. And, you know, and all these, these people are dead, but somehow, you know, life goes on and you don't think about death. When you're young, you don't think you're going to die. You think that's for somebody else. So, okay. and I, 
can I, sorry, can I just stop you there? Sure. Um, after the winding sheet, is that what is, you said, um, okay, so it, is this um, a fiction? Yes. It's, it's, it's basically a, a novel that you're writing. So, right. because if you're saying that you're talking about what happens after death, then you need to have had an experience explains it to you. So do you feel that you know what happens after death? Um, I, I have had a near death experience where, where I died. That was when I was nine months old and it must have, even though I don't remember that, it's something that stayed with me. I also had, uh, had this inner knowing where this ball came into me and I knew I had lived before. And it came in like a, a novel of this woman's life. I had just finished watching The Six Lives of, of Henry VIII. It was an old PBS program. This was a long, a long ways ago. This was like 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And no, the, the, no one liked Anne Boleyn. And the announcer said that nobody cried when she died. I didn't like Anne Boleyn. All of a sudden, I'm making my bed, minding my own business, and I get hit. It was like somebody punched me in the stomach. And it, there wasn't any pain, but like, it was like a book was shoved into me. And I knew all about her life. I knew that she, she didn't want to marry Henry. Henry reminded her too much of her brother who had raped her when she was a young girl. Right. So, it's, so basically, you're looking at it from the point of view of Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn, yes. So yeah. I, I, I know. I, I know that lifetime. I, I know, you know, what death is. I know that what happens after death. And also, I sorry. When you know, say you know, how do you know? In here, in, in here. here. This is what we've got to develop. Is this in here? Mm. And, and I've seen, I've seen spirit. I, one of my cats had to be put down, and I could see her soul rising up out of the top of her head. Mm -hmm. She stopped for a minute to thank me, and then she went on. Mm -hmm. I saw my horse. He had uh, Abez when he when he was put down. I saw him after he died. I know that personality survives death. I've seen ghosts. And sometimes... Yes. Is, it, is this all in the book? Are all these experiences going in, in the book? Yes, all these are going into the new book. Different, different things that I've seen. I did talk about Anne Boleyn in my other books. Um, yeah. I did write two novels, but unfortunately, the people that I had edit them, they did a terrible job of proofreading absolutely terrible they're they're an embarrassment so um okay. what one was on was richard third white war and the other one was um uh between between the worlds about henry and anne but again i just i don't know where these people's heads were i think they got and they're supposed to be professional proofreaders right. and, and they i i just they're embarrassments so i thought i would like to write a book that the, and do it right, have somebody, you know, proofread it. Because be, back then when I was writing, I couldn't proofread my own material. And now I'm getting better at doing it so I can do it. I can hand it off to somebody else who can even further comb through it. But, I mean, it, they're embarrassing. So that's why I'm doing another, another short novel so I could, it can be done right. Okay. Because you did mention, so one of these experiences was when you saw a ghost. You were in the UK. I did. I, I did. Um, yeah. uh, sometimes I see, I see spirit or ghosts with my physical eyes. And my friend, Corinna Hall and I, we had just gone to Kensington uh, Castle to see uh, Diana's, Princess Di's uh, dress display that was up at the time. And as we're coming back, she said, do you mind if we stop at my brother's house? And I'm, of course not. So we stopped at her brother's. And you know, they answered the door. They were really glad to see us both. And, oh, and she had told me before, that we, before we got there that her sister-in-law had had several miscarriages before she finally gave birth to the twins. So there is a girl sitting on the steps. So I'm assuming this is one of the twins. And she looks at me, and all of a sudden, you know, her eyes light up, and she smiles back at me. I'm talking to these people. Two more girls come down. So I realized that, that, this, that after she had the twins, she probably had this, this other daughter, right? So we're all talking. Everything's going fine. And at the end of the night, 
you know, I'm saying goodbye to everyone. I said goodbye to the twins. And I said, Where, where's, I realized, I said, where's your other daughter? And they said, what other daughter? Oh, God. And I, I hadn't been asked to do a reading. Um, I don't like imposing myself on people. So on the way home, I told Corinna, I said, I think that the, the girl that I saw on the steps, the first girl, I think that this was the spirit of one of the miscarriages that your, your sister-in-law had. And Corinna said, well, she, she should have been older. And I explained, well, when a newborn dies or when there's a miscarriage or an abortion, that soul that's been traveling with the mother has a choice. They can, they can stay with the family in spirit and grow. Uh, they can hang around and wait for the mother to get pregnant again. Or they can go off and find, you know, another mother. Or they can return to heaven's light. And okay. this girl obviously decided, you know, she, she needed to stay as a young girl. That was her choice. The, the aging does not happen in, in the spiritual realms like it does on the physical plane. So sometimes you can see ghosts and you don't even know that you're seeing them. Sure. I mean, I lost, um, I lost a sibling. I lost my brother in the womb. And I, it took me a long time to know this. It's a long story and it's part of my own recovery, you know, um, a lot of my codependency. But I realized that I had a sibling, definitely had a brother. And he died when we were still fetuses. And yet, uh, you know, I've had a lot of grief around it and it's, it, it did affect my life in a big way. Again, I'm, I'm not going to go into too much of that, but I do know, you know, how these things can happen as well. Um, and I, was, I, I think he just went back. I, he did, I don't think he, I'm not sure he could have reincarnated as the friend who helped me figure it all out because um, she's very, we're very close. And when she went away, um, so re this is really, really exciting and fascinating. Um, so if people want to get your books, where are they available? Um, Amazon.com. Okay. Um, so they can find your books. Uh, again, could you just tell us each name of each book separately? So okay. Um, there's a quick summary of each book. There's Reiki and other rays of touch healing, which lays the found the foundation for Teramai Reiki, you know, where it came from, um, how it came about different, you know, hands on healing techniques, uh, how to use symbols. Uh, Tara, My Journey Home uh, talks about all, all four elements, earth, air, fire, and water, and the healing element component that is with each, within each of these energies. Um, and also talks about a lifetime that I had as Rembrandt's daughter. Not Rembrandt, but Rembrandt's daughter. Illegitimate okay. daughter, but a lifetime to lead in the 16th century wow. as your legitimate child. But anyway... Uh, becoming a shaman, it's never too late to be who you might have been, uh, goes through uh, the shamanic class that I teach, and there are exercises in there that people can do. Uh, the, the novels are um, Between Two Worlds, the story of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn, and uh, Richard III, White Boar, but again, the proofreader uh, fell off the wagon. I don't know what happened, or she got on the wagon. I don't know, but they are are truly embarrassments, so I wouldn't recommend those. But, and then the ones I'm working on now are the, the novel After the Winding Sheet, and um, to expand upon tuning into our healing energies and, the, and our own spiritual force within us, awakening the spirit within, the ethereal cord between our heart chakra and solar plexus. And then I've written three completed feature sc uh, scripts, uh, Angels and Shadows, Flawed, and after the winding sheet. That's lovely. Thank you so much, Kathleen. So we've now heard a lot about the different books that you can purchase. Uh, we also know about the Wednesday uh, meditation, which I'm just going to add on here because this was uh, we recorded for a different program. But basically, every Wednesday, you can tune into Kathleen's um, website. Um, I will put the link, and you can tune in and connect to healers from all over the world every Wednesday at 8 p.m. It doesn't matter what country you're in, it will fit. 
And that way you can be part of a massive connection of healers that are uh, sending out healing to our planet and healing to each other, but m most of all to heal yourself from within. So just before we go, Kathleen, is there anything you would like to pass on to our viewers that you feel is really important for them to know? Well, let me just say that if anybody wants a private session with me, they can contact me at kathleen.milner at earthlink.net, and we can arrange a time and, uh, and a day for you to call. If you send me a list of times and days. If you want a reading, all I want to know is the question. I don't want all this background information. It gets, okay. gets in the way. It muddies my brain. So you do readings as well? I do. Medium readings. Okay, so people can contact you. Thank you for that. People can contact you and have the healing either physical if they're near you or by Skype, I presume, or like, you know, by Zoom. So people can get healing from all over the world, distant healing from you. Right. They can get a reading. Is that right? Right. Okay. And just, just a question, because moving on TV is for people, a lot of people out there um, that don't have a lot of money. Um, I try to make sure that, you know, I always ask these questions uh, because a lot of people that are going through a lot, they don't have a lot. Uh, do you do any kind of um, swap or bartering or do you do concessions for people? How does it work? Um, I do it on a donations or accepted basis. So people who can't afford anything at all can simply go to a church, light a candle, and, and pray for me. Uh, people who can give more, I mean, the most I got was $10,000 from a man wow. who got his back healed. So uh, the common donation is 100 to 250 but really, I mean, I do it on a donations are accepted basis, you know, so that people who really are down and out, who have this temporary cash flow, Mm -hmm. I, I think it would be very, very sad to say I, can, I could not afford a healing. I sure. mean, I, so would they do something like, you know, as I said, the, you would do some kind of swap or bartering with them so that that way they can have the healing? Uh, they could accept that, you know, oftentimes people come live in other countries so that swapping isn't, isn't you know, sure. easy. So they, they can make, a, you know, a minimum donation through um, uh, PayPal right you what, know, they, what's the least donation that you would accept from someone i, I would accept any as i do that on donations i accept this whatever people feel that the right. heat was worth and what they could afford you know that's what they should give yeah because do you feel that when people do that do you feel that then when you work with them they can actually improve their financial situation right we work on blockages to get the blockages out of the way because there are, there are demonic forces. They really exist. And they're trying oh, yeah, to stop exactly. this golden age. Yeah, we can they're see trying, them. They're trying to stop us. They're trying to, you know, stop abundance from coming to us because that's our energy. And so, yes, these blockages can be cl cleared. Um, I also have a, uh, a Facebook page called Teramai Healing Network DC, as in Washington, D.C., and they can look on that, and if they click on my photo and my name at the top, there's, there's a whole list of, of healing, clearing videos that I've recorded, and people are being cleared and healed through those. Just by watching the videos? Just, just by, well, tuning in. I think becoming a little bit active, because the, the people who are really active, you know, are releasing their anger, their fear, their sorrows. They're letting this stuff come up. They're letting these mental torture chambers go. They're giving it to the angels. Can you spell, sorry, can you spell the Facebook page? Okay, it's T-E-R-A-M-A-I Healing Network DC slash Facebook. Okay. So if people put that into Facebook, they'll be able to find you that way. Because as, you, as I said, there's a lot of people out there that can't get money to flow, you know, and they, they just don't know what to do and they're struggling so much. And um, it would be nice to know that they can get out of that some way because a lot of people, unfortunately, a lot of healing is expensive. 
and you know a lot of these things are expensive so people can't but that's what i try to do moving on tv is to pass on the message to everyone particularly to people that don't have much so i think it's very important to do that well thank you so much kathleen that's wonderful um i'm really glad to be able to pass on this message and um I hope that uh, you have a beautiful what's rest of the day. <laughs> uh, here it's getting closer and closer tonight here in the UK. And uh, hopefully we'll get a lot of people joining you on, your, on, your, um, on the, me the Wednesday meditation, connecting and helping making the, the, the planet a better place. Right, and it's free. <laughs> what else can you, what better thing can you ask for? It's free, you can do wonderful whatever you want. And hopefully some people will be able to get your books. So thank you so much. And um, I look forward to speaking to you soon. So take care. Thank you everyone for joining us on Moving On TV. And obviously if you have a story or a unique story or a book that you're releasing or anything, then please contact me at Lauren, L-A-U-R-E-N-E, at movingontv.uk. And we'll get you on here and help you get your story your uniqueness out there so take care now have a beautiful day namaste bye